Gentlemen, good evening. Namaste to all. My name is Dominic, the host for the day. I am the chairman of events and marketing in Focus. This is our uh, seventh uh, series, knowledge series. We are having every Friday of uh, every week. And uh, it's great to have you all once again. Uh, we have we are happy to say that we have almost 525 registration and we expect uh, uh, 50 to 60 percent to participate in this uh, uh, show. Uh, with me, I have uh, my, fr uh, my friend and my colleague, the chairman of uh, uh, Focus Fire Vertical and also the vice chair, Mr. Abhishek Chabra, who is responsible on the pacifier. So, Liaqat Ali Khan, LA Khan, known as LA Khan, is a mechanical engineer from Bangalore University and founder member of FSAI, and also the founder member of Focus. We, he has excellent uh, 30 years of exper expertise in fire suppression systems. He's also the member of CED Committee of Bureau of Indian Standard. He has his own business called Topaz Fire System and one of the largest clean agent fire suppression suppliers in India. I now welcome uh, Mr. Khan to welcome the gathering. Uh, thank you, uh, Dominic, uh, for the welcome. And it's a pleasure to have uh, expert panelists here. Uh, welcome to you, Dr. Lal Joseph, Dr. Vijay Agarwal, and Mr. Abhishek. And it's been uh, quite a association we have with Kaho. Uh, which is a consortium of healthcare organizations where uh, the primary, primary objective is to maintain quality of the healthcare organizations and also keep on continually improving the quality methods of adopted by various organizations, whether it is a hospital or a nursing home, whoever is a member of CAHO. And it's going to be a collaboration with uh, CAHO, which we are presenting this uh, webinar on how to uh, contain and uh, prevent spread of fire in hospitals. As you're all aware, hospitals uh, and nursing homes have a certain special features which are not identical to other categories of buildings. And as per national building code, these are classified in class in the group C institutional buildings where you have various like hospitals, nursing homes, and also sanatoria or uh, mental asylums and uh, penal uh, custodial uh, institutions. It is uh, very critical in a hospital because uh, most of the people there are patients and they're ambulatory and non-ambulatory persons who should be taken care of. We have to see how to prevent and contain the fires and make sure that the patients are also safe. In this regard, we have experts uh, who are going to talk about uh, the passive uh, methods of fire protection. And also we have uh, Dr. Vijay Agarwal who is going to talk about how safe the hospitals can be made and what quality uh, measures to be taken to prevent and uh, uh, be the safe, become a safe hospital. And Dr. Lalu Joseph, the practicing uh, expert on this uh, and take up issues of how well you can maintain your uh, ICUs and uh, prevent fires and uh, make sure that you at least contain them and prevent. You cannot avoid as uh, the fires, but at least how to prevent and the fires. So I'll hand over to Dominic to take us through the journey now and welcome you all once again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Khan. That's um, L.A. Khan of... Uh, Focus, Chairman of Fire. Uh, we we have uh, eminent speaker, the keynote speaker, Dr. Vijay Agarwal, who's the president of Kao. Dr. Vijay is a crusader of continual quality improvement in healthcare as a vision to raise the bar of Indian healthcare organization to match the global standards through Kaho, which is a national body of repute for promoting patient safety, healthcare quality protocols, and accreditation. He believes that people make quality, 
driven by his passionate belief, a series of cover certified professional courses were established to equip and train every healthcare professional to pursue the quality journey. He was instrumental, sorry, he was instrumental in country adopting polio, uh, sorry, pulse polio strategy for polio eradication and also played a key role in shaping the biomedical waste management scheme in New Delhi. He was a member of ISRO Health Quest project, a unique collaboration between space scientists and healthcare professionals to take the country closer to the global error-free healthcare. He is a, he is a post, postgraduate in pediatric from Maulana Azad Medical College, New Delhi. He commenced his professional career in 1973, as over the decades earned sterling reputation as a pediatrician and has been recognized by IMA as a honorary professor. The list of awards goes on, the Lifetime Achievement Award by IMA, Lifetime Achievement Award of Association of Healthcare Providers of India, QIPMRO, Platinum Standard Healthcare Award for being national statements of quality and excellence. Over to Dr. Vijay Agarwal. my friend, Mr. Dominic, uh, giving me this opportunity to share this very prestigious conference of yours, uh, wherein we are talking about firefighting in the hospitals. And I'm supposed to talk a little bit about the uh, companies of the healthcare organizations and what we do to overcome them. So I bring you greetings from Kaho. To say that hospitals are uh, complex organizations, I think will be an understatement. I don't think any other service organization can level of complexity, which is encountered in a multi-speciality tertiary care hospital. One way to measure you know, complexity will be to determine the number of different kinds of people working in an organization that requires specialized knowledge and skills. And to compound this problem in the hospital, the inadequate number available, and most of them who are available are all not well trained. And that's the kind of a pool to choose from that they should be working in the hospitals. So these inadequately trained workforce is overstretched. And when it interacts with each other or with the patients who are mostly vulnerable, mistakes will happen and they happen. Sparks can fly resulting in a kind of different kind of which the managers on the floor, they do the fire daily basis. If it makes you feel any better, Institute of Medicine in the United States in the year 2000 reported that 98,000 Americans were dying because of preventable medical, because of the complexities of the hospitals. Now, even after 20 years, that kind of a revolution, and even after 100 years of their accreditation, USA, in USA, they still have medical errors as the third leading cause. So accreditation has helped hospitals, even in our country, to some extent, to put our house in order. However, the task is not easy. And as I said, the country like USA, which is spending 40 times more money than us, is still struggling with the kind of the numbers that I do. Fire, when it happens in such an environment, which will be top, 
can be very chaotic. You can imagine a lady delivering in the labor room, undergoing cardiac surgery, another 20 patients undergoing dialysis, a number of patients in the ICU on ventilating circumstances safely becomes all together a different ball game. How do I describe such a situation? Probably, I think uh, we must have the term called VUCA. This was coined by Warren Bess in the year 1987 to describe uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. This was to describe the globalization of the business world leading to this buka state. And I feel that probably their presence in some healthcare organization must have given them this idea to coin the term buka. Because nothing else can better represent the meaning of the word buka. So VUCA thus offers, a, I would say, a leadership challenge to offer constructive influence in a VUCA environment that is characterized by the sudden and dramatic change. When you are in a VUCA environment, it is the collective wisdom of you and your team that will determine whether evidence is suitable for handling the situation you are And this requires what we are trying to call VUCA Prime. VUCA Prime asserts that the right kind of leader can foster a positive VUCA world on vision instead of volatility, understanding instead of uncertainty, clarity in place of complexity, and agility in place of ambiguity which allows the collective wisdom to align evidence to trend and ensure they are abreast of the rapid, rapid change. So vision will thwart the volatility, the ability to articulate a vision and maintain focus on long-term desired results becomes a constant in the storm. Understanding diminishes under uncertainty Clarity will help you wade through the complexity by offering clear goals, objectives, and messages. And agility will help you structure yourself and your organization to overcome ambiguity through an emphasis on adaptability, encourage leadership, and innovation through experimentation and enabled decision making. So, what I feel is that. organization requires a very different kind of a leadership, very different kind of an approach to make it safe because all the traditional methods have failed so far. I think the involvement of the community itself also in making the hospital safe is very, very important. I think a limited time available I cannot do justice to this topic of the complexity of the hospital and how to kind of make them safe. But I hope I have been able to drive home that today hospitals are more dangerous than bungee jumping. They are not place. People should not kind of just try to reach hospitals on the drop of a hat. One about what do you want has worked in hospitals for a long time. I have seen the growth of hospitals being a relatively safe place to now the hospital being quite unsafe because of the complexity of the newer kind of and very invasive kind of medicines that is crept into these hospitals. So fire, which was never a big issue in a long time back today, with the hospital, which was initially a 10-bed hospital, now becomes a 100-bed hospital by extending his rooms and increasing the power to those rooms without looking at the backbone that they had. So this is what I think I can say, that let's 
do something to make hospitals safer and see also all about this issue of the firefighting. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. That's Dr. Vijay Agarwal for all of you, the president of Kao. Right statement, let's make hospitals safe. People go there to save their lives. I'm sure the structure also should ensure they are safe. So that's the message uh, Dr. Vijay Agarwal has given. My apologies to all the participants. The audio quality was very poor. I think we had a very bad internet connection. Um, so the voice, we'll try and see how we can improve or probably pre-record another recorder can be um, you know, uh, stitched in the editing when we circulate to all of you. Thank you so much, Dr. Vijay Agarwal. Uh, can I request uh, our admin uh, Mamata to play the video of focus? Yes, sir. Sure. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are delighted to present to you the Forum of Critical Utility Services, the acronym of which is FOCUS. Much as the acronym suggests, the role of the Forum of Critical Utility Services is to bring in focus all that concerns the construction industry. This is not just for India, but for a coordinated construction industry world over. For those of you who may not be aware, this initiative is to prepare and present a platform where all the verticals of the critical utility services of the construction industry forge into one formidable group that will strive in building unity, aid in diffusing misconceptions and present itself as a platform for discussions amongst these bodies of professionals. This initiative was born on the 26th of October 2020 when the world was almost silent from the after effects of the pandemic. We say silent because the cry for help and riddance from the clutches of the pandemic were deafening. There simply was no place that was safe anywhere in the world. None of the formidable structures that man had erected was safe for protection from the pandemic. It was during these times that we decided on creating a platform so as to be able to present improved and concerted methodologies of developing projects that shall not just be sustainable or resilient but also deliver safe environment and a valuable business opportunity to the promoters not just for some time but for long long time to come times when another generation will inherit the good work that we do today our efforts begin with drawing the strength from the fields of architecture electrical plumbing HVAC safety fire security illumination Vertical Transportation, IBMS and IT, Solid Waste Management and last but not the least, Facility Management. Bring them together and forge them into one strong wheel of change to deliver structures that stand in harmony with Mother Nature on planet Earth. And this ladies and gentlemen is our mission. Only when we come together and share our ideas and aspirations will we find the stumbling blocks. It is here then that when we are together and focus towards one goal, we will jointly be able to understand and address our challenges as one formidable force. Not just a force in India but for a global movement that will find solutions opportunities and the means to address productivity, safety, quality, developing skills, training, evolving standards and ensuring their implementation 
thereby becoming centers of excellence and setting benchmarks for generations to pursue and improve. And this is our vision. We have embarked upon reaching out to various verticals of the critical utility services. We will thereafter jointly present our cause to the government and policy makers. We will present our vision to the builders. And we are confident that we will break the shackles of inequality, indifference, ignorance and mistrust and build a world that is one with nature. Ladies and gentlemen, we are not here to conjure a forum, but we are here to establish a body that shall have trust, integrity and honesty for its foundation and stand on the pillars of knowledge, commitment, enthusiasm and foresight of its people. Our invitation to you is open. Come and become a part of FOCUS. It is your contribution and support to FOCUS that will make a difference to the new India that is being created. Let's join and make this the Bharat that we wear. Shining, prosperous, bright and a true world leader. Let's now focus. Thank you, Mamata, for a wonderful video. To, uh, we will have the sponsors a little later after Dr. Lal Joseph uh, uh, speaks. So we will uh, continue with another video. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce our, uh, our welcome address by uh, Dr. Lal Joseph, the Secretary General of Kavo. She is one of the famous figure in our industry. Wherever there is a fire subject in hospital, you could see her. We are very honored to have her here on this platform. She is the Associate, Associate General Superintendent of quality, and Quality Manager of CMC Velo, the largest NABH accredited hospital in India. Prior to joining healthcare, she was the Vice President of Software Company and Teaching Assistant at Rotman School of Management, University of Toronto. A mechanical engineer by profession, went on to complete her master's and doctorate in business administration and a diploma in CQI from the Canadian Healthcare Administration. A keen learner completed the one-year executive general management program in IAM Bangalore in 2016. She has many book chapters and publication to her credit and was part of developing the entry-level guidelines of NABH standards, a joint, joint initiative of NABH and World Bank. She was involved in overseeing the implementation of QMS in selected government hospitals of Karnataka through KAO as part of World Bank funded project and a part of Task Force Karnataka Knowledge Commission implementation on procedural costing. She has been instrumental in developing 22 training programs for KAO, which are well sought out. A passionate teacher and trainer has trained over 3,000 professionals across the country and is also the faculty of many hospital administration programs. She's also the principal assessor of NABH. She's also represented Kavo at the Executive Board of Asian Society of Quality in Healthcare. Welcome, Dr. Lalu Joseph, for the program. Over to you. Thank you so much, Dominic, for that extensive introduction. I don't know if I deserve all that. <laughs> uh, so welcome, dear friends. And indeed, it's a pleasure to be part of FOCUS. I think this is the first time I'm actually uh, coming and, or rather being part of the FOCUS forum. Uh, really appreciate the initiative taken because this is the need of the hour. And it's not just for our industry, for every industry. And we really look forward to hearing lots from FOCUS in the coming days, particularly with regards to critical utility services and look forward to a good collaboration with you. I bring greetings from Christian Medical College Velo and also the consortium of accredited healthcare organizations in India. 
Dr. Vijay Agarwal, the president has uh, rightly put across the role of leadership, the VUCA environment. And uh, uh, let me give you a brief introduction about CAHO. CAHO is a consortium of accredited healthcare organizations in India. As he mentioned, the one of the dangerous or the uh, industries probably, it's extremely hazardous, I should say. He compared it to bungee jumping. I would certainly endorse that. You, so if you are really looking at an industry where you really need to bring in services, particularly your utility services, bring in safety, it is healthcare. Because all of us know it is very unsafe to practice as a professional and as a patient as well. So with that background, let me put across my thoughts on how unsafe this industry is, and particularly in times of COVID, the, what we have witnessed. So it's not possible to prevent a fire. I don't know whether somebody can say um, it's possible to really prevent a fire from happening, but at least it's possible to contain and prevent the spread of fire. And that's exactly what we are going to be talking about. In industry like ours, you know, in a hospital like mine, with over 3,000 beds, we typically have about 27,000 patients, relatives, everybody coming into the setup on a daily basis as outpatients, like 9,000 outpatients. And you have two relatives coming along with them and 3,000 inpatients in a setup like India, you can imagine for lunch, there'll be five relatives coming with lunch baskets. For dinner, another five patient relatives coming in. So it is just unimaginable. It is thoroughfare. And when you don't do that, there is a cultural sensitivity attached. So therefore, everybody wants to see, it's like a mela in hospitals. Whereas if you compare this with the hotel, you can very well restrict the movement. These are ambulant people in our hotels. In healthcare, these are non-ambulance sick patients. And along with that, you have elderly relatives, too many people coming into the setup. So it is a disaster every day. In the next 10 minutes, let me just take you through the healthcare scenario. I'm going to use a presentation. If you may allow me, yes, I have the rights. So in my opinion, I put it as hospitals and disasters. In my opinion, hospitals are disasters waiting to happen at any time. So if you look at this, there's a definition for disaster, which says it is a sudden accident or a, or a natural catastrophe that causes great damage or loss of life. Classified both as natural and human made, disasters we all know have the uncanny ability to bring to the forefront vulnerability of the systems, structures, processes, and people. This is typically what we have been witnessing in the last one and a half years, a pandemic that is happening, which has thrown open the kind of vulnerability the globe is facing. Hospitals are no exception. And if you notice, when we are affected in the hospitals, the repercussions are multifold. What happens to the patients? what happens to the community that requires the kind of help that is required. So it is multiple repercussions and it is it can be a catastrophe. Types of disaster, we all know it's internal disasters and external disasters. Typically in a fire emergency, like what we are discussing today, we are going to be talking about internal disaster. It's an unforeseen situation and limited to a hospital facility can cause huge damage to people and property disrupts or even shuts down a hospital. Best examples that we quote are fire accidents and explosions that happen in a hospital. External, of course, unforeseen situation happening outside, like an aircraft accident or any other accident or a terrorist activity, flooding, where you may end up having a lot of patients coming into your healthcare facility. So here we are focusing today on internal disaster. This is the example that all of us quote, which is the AMRI hospital, Kolkata. We lost almost 92 lives to the fire that happened in AMRI. And the fire started at 2.15 a.m. And the escalation was done only at about 3.30 or 4.10. And the rescue process started at 4.30, two and a half hours. And 
all of us know the problems that happened. There was no setback. Vehicles were parked around the building. The basement had a lot of inflammable articles like paper, cotton, mattresses. Alarms did not get activated and it was made inactive due to many false alarms. Typically, that's what happens in most hospitals. Everybody gets disturbed. So what happens? You put off the fire alarm system. So the active fire protection uh, detection system was inactivated. Fire extinguishers at the basement were not checked. No evacuation was initiated even after one and a half hours. Central AC system and electricity supply was not stopped. Too many, too many problems. And we all know the problems that took place in AMRA fire. Have we really learned? I think we have learned. It's unfortunate if we say we have not learned. We are a huge country. And you know, if, if, uh, if someone asks me how many hospitals are there, I certainly do not know the numbers. I can give a guesswork, probably 60,000 to 80,000 hospitals in this country, because there's no central law that is governing. There, you know, it's a state run and uh, certain state governments have registration of hospitals, some do not have. So we don't actually have the number of hospitals, but we are all quite conscious and cautious after multiple incidents that have happened. So to cut short, how did I get interested in this topic? All of you know I'm a mechanical engineer, but many do not know because I am in this industry. I talk like a doctor and nurse and many think that I'm one of them. But actually, I'm an engineer, a mechanical engineer, went on to get into this industry with a lot of passion. And let me tell you my experience when I went as an assessor for one of the hospitals. I went into one of the dialysis areas and that was the eye opener for me. 14 patients connected to the dialysis machine. And I asked the people in the, on the floor, the dialysis technicians, if there is a fire or a natural disaster now, how will you evacuate these patients? Believe me, none of them knew what to do. I asked them, which is the number? And they knew the number to call. Okay, you're calling the number and the fire team comes in. Fire is spreading. How are you going to evacuate these patients? Nobody knew what to do. It's very simple, very straightforward. These are ambulance patients who are connected to the machine. They just need the, you know, the lines had to be clamped. Patients need to be made to sit up so that they don't have a syncope. Just move them out because these are ambulance patients. But most of them, none of them actually knew what to do. That is why hospitals, I realized, are becoming like oven and furnaces. Because the staff there do not know what to do in an emergency. How to evacuate a patient. Midpoint surgery. Patient connected to a ventilator. Patient connected to a brachytherapy machine. What happens in a fire or in any emergency? So that is how I got involved in this entire thing and started developing a lot of protocols for patient evacuation. And believe me, it's been a great journey because the industry has been very, very open and accepting. But very unfortunate things keep happening. The last one year or one and a half years, we've had umpteen number of fire accidents in COVID wards and ICUs. Typically 21 major fire in the last one year. So why has this been happening? Why not all these other years and why typically in COVID? So if you look at the fact sheet, the global data for 15 years suggests that 35 percentage of the fire is basically due to air conditioning and electrical fire and all that. And analysis of major fire in hospital reveals the same picture. Typically in hospitals, our load is very high. So many equipment, electro electrical load, electronic load, high end load is extremely high. And we are not too safe. We are not too cautious about how to connect, whether the load will really take it. So we connect too many extension cords. We take, you know, the pendant is there, but we still have to connect five infusion pumps, two suction machines, and then the ventilator. So if you typically look at an ICU patient, it is a lot of equipment that is connected to this patient. And if you look at the fact sheet, many deaths in ICU, particularly during COVID. Why? Because ICUs, we know that, you know, most patients are connected to oxygen. It's not just ventilator. It could be NIV, it could be BPAP, BiPAP, it could be CPAP. A lot of oxygen that gets leaked into the atmosphere. And it's a super saturated environment that we are looking at. Now, as engineers, as part of focus, you may think that, you know, an ICU has an air handling unit 
and there are 12 air exchangers. Believe me, not many ICUs have that. So it is like a split AC or a window AC. Probably you add on, you know, 15 tons of split AC and about 20 tons of window AC there. So what happens is that it's internal air circulation. It's a super saturated oxygen environment. Only large hospitals typically go in for air handling units. Others just go in for package units. So you have your air handling, then you look at 12 air exchanges. So here in this case, it's not so. So typically it is just super saturated oxygen environment. I'll bring out one incident that happened in one of our wards. There was a COVID ward fire. There was a fire call, our team rushed in and they realized that the smoke was coming from somewhere. You know what had happened? The patient had put his mobile phone on charge. He had put his mobile phone under the pillow and adjacent to him the plug, okay? Now here, this started giving out the smoke because there was a short connection and the mobile phone started giving fumes. Patient was a COVID patient. He could not smell anything. Imagine, all patients in that COVID flow could not smell and the healthcare workers were all wearing the N95 mask and everything. And they also could not get the real smell of the smoke that was coming in. To the extent that the smoke alarm was activated and only after that they realized it was coming from the pillow. Pillow was half burnt and then they, our team went in, put off the fire. It was not fire though. They had to put off everything and, you know, come out. Now, in a typical COVID ICU, you have a lot of oxygen saturated and you use a lot of sanitizers also. So this also adds on to it. So what, how have we all responded? particularly preventive maintenance of equipment, ward, ICUs, very frequent maintenance of the area, adequate ventilation, forced ventilation and natural cross ventilation by opening the doors and windows probably every three hours, four hours, evacuation protocols prepared, circulated, staff training. And in fact, in my hospital, we have actually posted trained fire guards in the COVID flow. And all security guards in the COVID flows are trained and they wear the PPE complete PP, so they are able to walk in, rush in any time. And the fire guards carry with them actually the N95 and the visor at all times. Frequent audits of the COVID area by our fire teams and all of us and mock drills conducted virtually. We use the tabletop exercise and we connect to the COVID floor, ICUs, wards, and we keep asking questions. How will you evacuate? What will you do? Show us your ICU, show us your ward, look at our, let us look at your load. So this is typically how we have been doing to just top it up, you know, you don't have this team, it's dangerous. So I really give credit to our team headed by our uh, Mr. Natarajan, Mr. Niranjan and the entire fire team, which has been working tirelessly, I should say the last two years, particularly during COVID times. N number of times they have rushed into the COVID wards just to make sure that things are safe and kept uh, ready. So this is to add on to Mr. Dominic. So without this team, you just cannot manage whatever systems you put in. And, um, you know, I really give credit to this team for all that they are doing uh, and for the great work they are doing. So with this, I complete, I finish my talk, just giving an overview about hospitals, the hazards, and the kind of hazard that we are facing in our COVID wards and ICUs. Thank you very much for this wonderful opportunity. And I assure our support from the industry uh, for all the activities of focus to make our hospitals healthier and safer. Thank you, Dominic. Thank you, Kansar and Abhishek. Dominic needs to unmute and Dominic doesn't know. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Thank you, Abhishek, for that. Uh, thank you, madam. You know, you always come out with a lot of eye-opening uh, statements and wonderful uh, message to people. And, um, you know, I've not heard you since last one and a half years, so I'm hearing and, uh, you know, I hope that we continue to, you know, uh, see you in many of our uh, focus uh, program. I also like to welcome our president, uh, Dr. V. Suresh. Uh, who has been in marathon, uh, you know, Zoom meetings since morning. Um, uh, welcome, uh, do, uh, welcome, uh, Suresh sir. And we have Thank our Kavo president, Dr. Vijay Agarwal, also who gave the wonderful uh, welcome address, uh, the keynote address to the gathering, sir. 
So <laughs> before moving uh, to the next speaker, Abhishek Chabra, I would like to you know introduce our sponsor, uh, Orient Fire Curtain, a video for two minutes. Mamata, can we have the video, please? Orient Fire Curtains is an Indo-British joint venture operating in India since 2030. Orient Fire Curtains has successfully executed more than 300 projects span India basis. This totals to about 3,500 fire curtains till date. Double barrel curtain with overlap for easy access. Basement car park compartmentation. Office compartmentation. Staircase escalator compartmentation with corner support. Open kitchen compartmentation without corner support. Staircase escalator compartmentation without corner support. got on to the next event where I'm chairing that. That's why I didn't leave it. No issue, no issue. It was so nice. It was a wonderful job. Uh, Mamta, can you mute? Uh, or, uh, Suresh? Uh, okay. Mute. Okay. That's our sponsor, Orient Fire Curtain. Uh, for you, ladies and gentlemen, I have now next speaker, uh, Mr. Abhishek Chabra. As you all, in, I introduced in the beginning, Abhishek Chabra is also vice chair of Focus on Fire, who's giving advice on passive fire protection. And uh, Abhishek uh, is a well-known face internationally on various subjects on passive fire, is an engineer from India and then a PG in finance and a semi a semiconductor was his uh, project. And he specialized in consumer and industrial product, renewable, uh, renewable energy, building material fire safety. He is also a member of ASTM International United Arab Emirates chapter. And he is part of committee member of UAE Fire and Life Safety Code contributor. He has a very interesting uh, uh, website called uh, Tech Guru, TIC Guru. So a lot more to talk and I'm sure uh, uh, Abhishek will keep us engaged and uh, throw a lot of light on how to prevent fire in hospital. Over to Abhishek. Thank you very, very much, uh, Dominic and Focus Group and just about everybody who I can see around uh, today for uh, laying the ground for a fantastic problem that we have, uh, which is a very, very complex uh, matter related to uh, fires in hospitals. 
it is a problem that the world over people have been struggling on and uh, i must start uh, by thanking all the audience who is uh, joined in from different parts uh, of the country and i think we are uh, uh, probably the elitist of the elite of the country because all the engineers and doctors are together on a platform which is uh, usually quite a unique uh, situation to be in and as uh, doctors have just now explained how complex the problem is i want to try and uh, bring about slightly better understanding of how uh, such a matter is attacked or tackled uh, dr um, joseph explained to great details how complex the issue can be and is for uh, tackling fires and i want to bring uh, out today two or three perspectives of how uh, various types of healthcare facilities hospitals have worked over the decades to arrive at processes procedures which form the backbone of ensuring that small fire incidents do not become big fire accidents dr joseph uh, described just now a classic example where one of the patients who uh, who was charging his phone and the, in the covid ward and thank god that there existed a smoke detector and and it is really good to know that the staff of the hospital was very very well trained so i want to talk about the fact that what are these measures and processes in place dr vijay alluded in the beginning that uh, it is one of the most risky uh situations to be in in a hospital and and i couldn't agree more with him in terms of the complexity of the hospital when we are talking of a hospital it is a mix of so many different types of what is called occupancy types and what i mean by occupancy types is that you have a in which you can define the behavior of people as well as the risk of that kind of people so for example if you look at a nursing station if you look at the records room if you look at the ambulance section if you look at the operation theater or a ward or the cafeteria of a hospital all of these different sections of a hospital represent two things which are very unique in common one they are able to categorize the kind of risk that exists in that grouping as well as it can define the general behavior of people in that group and as very rightly said in the beginning as well that not only it is a high stress high crowd environment like dr joseph was explaining that if you have one patient coming in you have two supporters relatives coming in if you have one person who is inside admitted to the hospital there are five lunch boxes that are coming in and so on and so forth but above all of this the fact that a hospital is an engineering marvel it is a marvel of mind where doctors of the highest caliber nurses technicians all are together which can potentially cause errors confusions there is one element which is additionally unique as against comparing this with any other kind of occupancy like a mall or a airport where a lot of people come in from outside they don't know where to go they may not know what is the exit but usually in an airport or in a shopping mall people are often excited and happy whereas in a hospital all the people that come in a good percentage of them are really really scared and any mistake is often a matter of life and death so how do we deal with this the prime methodology by which world over people have devised mechanisms processes procedures that when used correctly will ensure that fires do not become big big accidents a small fire can be contained 
And today I aim to delve a little deeper into explaining three parts of this. It begins with, of course, I start with uh, our uh, National Building Code, but in a sense, what the National Building Code's chapter four talks about, which is fire and life safety. It uses a concept, which I want to explain as the occupancy concept, what it means, I alluded in the beginning. It helps everybody as a stakeholder, right from designers to users and maintainers understand A, the kind of risk that exists in any given kind of construction, and B, it is able to group together the behavior of people in that grouping. As you can see, these are the occupancy types or groupings defined in the National Building Code of India, but in codes world over, whether it is the American International Building Codes, uh, NFPA codes, codes followed in the UAE or Saudi Arabia or anywhere in the world, they all use this specific concept of occupancy. As you can understand and imagine, if you are in a residential area or a commercial building like an office, it is an area which people are very familiar with. You either live there or go there every day. You know how to run out. You know where to go in case of fire because you're familiar with the surrounding. This is very different when compared to a mall, an airport, and of course a hospital where more often than not, people going into this building or infrastructure are not aware how to get out, where to go in case there is an accident or a fire. It also helps to group together what is the kind of risk for example, if you're talking of storage facilities, if you're talking of high hazard areas or shops, uh, which are of a certain type, we are aware or we can fairly easily group what is the kind of risk that may exist in these kind of occupancies. This helps us form strategies to ensure that a small accident, which will potentially happen, will not become a very, very big accident. Some of these uh, boxes that you see on the screen uh, define different occupancy types or different groups, which are clubbed together in a hospital or a healthcare facility, making it very, very complex as earlier explained by Dr. Vijay and uh, Dr. Joseph as well. What do we really do? The core concepts of fire safety remain very, very similar. The intensity by which they are implemented is what changes when we talk of different occupancy types. We all know that in case there is a fire, we need to make sure that it is detected. We need to make sure that it is contained where the fire has happened. It should not spread. And most importantly, we need to evacuate the people and keep the people contained from inhaling smoke or toxic gases, which could kill them. These concepts remain the same. The different types of occupancies is where and how these concepts are implemented properly. Now, it is important to know that what is it that we are dealing with? We are dealing with small fire incidents, which will always happen. Irrespective of how careful you are, there will always be such accidents. But it is important to know that across the span of the cycle of construction, Right from the time we think of making a building, we desire to build a hospital, right through the process of constructing a hospital, constructing any building type, planning the furnishing, furnishing it, as well as living, occupying, and maintaining the place. All throughout this cycle, these two core concepts are the guiding light and if you understand these two core concepts of how fire protection is maintained, 
it will ensure that all our decisions are taken very very well what are these two concepts of fire protection we begin with what is well known in some sectors an active fire protection system and a passive fire protection system as the name suggests an active fire protection system is all those processes products materials that activate when they sense a fire this range from smoke detectors fire detectors flame detectors annunciators as well as sprinklers gas suppression systems and all those measures which give an indication that there is a fire and help people act in case there is a fire on the other hand there is something which is called passive fire protection and this is often not so well marketed and these are all the products materials and systems that will ensure that if there is a fire it will not grow quickly it will not release a lot of smoke and in case there is a fire it can be contained within a given area so that the rest of the building can be evacuated there can be a rescue that can come in very very quickly and lives can be saved property can be saved how do we make sure that such containment gets designed correctly and gets implemented correctly this is the second section which i want to bring about today as a very very important concept and often not well understood and that's mainly because the potential risk of an active fire system failing is almost similar to a passive fire protection system failing so these two systems need to work hand in hand as one of my friends was sharing the other day in a car it is like having a handbrake and a seat belt they are different mechanisms they both focus on ensuring safety let's begin with containment some of you would probably be familiar with the term fire door or fire rated wall and maybe some of you understand this very well that any partition system a door or any such construct which will ensure that fire gets contained within the area where it started from you may have seen fire doors fire rated glazing system but how are they exactly manufactured or made they are made with basic building materials which are produced in a factory and anybody relying on a fire door a fire rated wall or any construct which will create compartmentalization should very well understand that there exists a risk of these products not performing the way they are declared to the same goes for reaction to fire if you have carpets internal finishing material upholstery and any of the several things which are inside the occupancy they can catch fire and when they do catch fire are they very very combustible will they produce a lot of hot gases smoke and increase the fire load inside a compartmentalization if yes you all must understand what are the ways to check how they behave and ensure that if someone says that my product will not catch fire how do you really check it a third part which is fire resistance of the structure or the structural fire protection which became very very debated when the world trade center incident happened long long ago as 911 is known where very high heat and temperature caused the structure to go fall inside and this is where all the structure of any building needs a fire resistance rating also different types of coatings which ensure that structural steel as an example which may uh, bow at 600 800 degrees celsius when such an ambient temperature is seen the structure does not fall down 
Now, before I move forward, I just want to get nomenclature in place. A lot of people use the term fire rated and fire retardant sometimes interchangeably. And because all of you are attending this very, very interesting session, it is important to know what fire rated really means and what fire retardant really means. When we talk of fire rated, we are talking of a number in hours or minutes, which is the duration for which a compartment maintains compartmentalization or a structure can maintain its structural strength. Whereas fire retardant is a group of several properties like ignition, spread of flame, smoke, heat release, anything that defines how products and materials react when they come in contact with fire. Now this being said, let us understand how is it that compartmentalization is designed and implemented correctly. If you see the image on your screens, you will understand that there is a fully developed fire in one section of the building. Despite this fully developed fire, which is also releasing smoke, hot gases, and is often at a very, very high temperature, upwards of 800, 900 degrees Celsius, the other sections of the building above, adjacent below, as well as the section above the false ceiling are contained and protected. This is containment. And in order to deliver this containment, a lot of effort needs to be done. But first, let's begin. How do we really test anything that is able to deliver this containment? What you see on your screens is an image of a furnace. This is where a fire resistant element is tested. This furnace is out of our laboratory here in Dubai. And what we do typically is we install the compartmentalization system. In this case, a fire rated door. And this compartmentalization system closes the face of the furnace that you have just seen. Inside the furnace, we recreate a situation which is a fully developed fire. This would mean temperatures which are upward of 600, 700, 900 degrees Celsius, as well as pressure, positive or negative, which is created. What you see is also a graph which shows the rate in the time, how quickly the temperature on the fire side of the furnace is increasing. This is typically how any system, product or material who claims that yes, my product or system is fire rated, which means it can contain and resist fire, spread of hot smoke and gases, and sometimes even insulation property will be there for 60 minutes, 90 minutes, 120 minutes, or so on and so forth. How do we test? There are different testing methods, quite a large number and very often People kind of get confused. Should we follow the British standard? Should we follow the European standard? Should we follow the American standard? And the time temperature curve, mind you, is very, very similar in both the cases. The methodology of measurement varies. And if any of you are interested to learn more about how these tests are performed for wall systems, for glazing system, structural steel, or any of the other systems like dampers, fire stopping, or roofs or flooring, I would be happy to explain at a later point of time how these tests are done. But today, it is important that all the stakeholders understand this very, very well, that what do you do when you actually get a test report? Is a test report a good means of evidence to say, let's go ahead, and procure 500 such systems. If you are, if you are 
contracted to build a hospital or maintain a hospital where you need to maintain compartmentalization and you are procuring 500 fire doors is a test report good or not as an evidence that the supplier is going to provide 500 doors which will contain the fire for 60 minutes or 90 minutes or whatever the rating you may talk about and here is a very very important aspect more often than not if a sample reaches a laboratory for testing unlike the sample of blood which may be taken in a hospital where the blood doesn't know it is getting tested the sample manufactured in a factory knows that it is going for a test and hence it becomes extremely important to understand that what goes behind the test report how did the test report really come to be and very often a test report alone is not a very very good measure that what will be supplied by the subcontractor or the material supplier because you really don't know what happened in the past how do you really overcome this in many countries many jurisdictions the basic the basic procurement principle has changed from just a test report to what is called as certification and listing what is certification and listing this is a measure in place this is a process which ensures a very high degree of assurance how does this happen a third party certification body will visit the manufacturer's premises and witness the assembly of that sample like a fire door or a gypsum board or anything that has to be tested for a given property like fire resistance this once traceability is established the tests are conducted and after these tests are conducted we will as a third party certification body will repetitively go back to the manufacturer's location and audit the quality procedure the processes the systems to ensure that the manufacturer is making the exact same product over and over again how do you check this product is coming to the construction site well the product which has been tested and certified is listed onto a certification directory and this certification directory will have a unique traceability number called the certification number this can be verified online by anybody not only for procurement purposes but also very very importantly for anybody who is inspecting for the installation to be correct inspecting that the product that was declared the product that was quoted for is the product that has been delivered to the construction site to the project to the hospital or to whatever occupancy which needs this it is very important to know and understand that these certification directories are a mandatory requirement for anybody issuing a third party certification to prove compliance to any test method that is chosen let me quickly take an example of someone is having a 300 bed or a 500 bed hospital which is in the making or is being maintained the fire and life safety plan which is dependent on the type of occupancy and the type of compartmentalization that has been designed to ensure that the life is safe will release what is called a door schedule it will release a list of doors that are readed so imagine 500 doors which are sent out for procurement and what is submitted to you as a evidence is not a test report but a certification and listing we just saw how the certification and listing is verified but the doors the door set the door system that may be certified and listed could be different from the 500 doors which are needed for that specific tender for that specific hospital 
And this is where it becomes very, very critical that either a test is done again or some level of assessment or technical evaluation is done to prove that what is required for a given project is the same as what will be delivered and will comply to that rating. Only then you have enough evidence to inspect and make sure that the doors that are delivered will comply to the requirements. We have two Moving minutes on. More, uh, two minutes more. Yeah. Okay, so I will very, very quickly conclude this, that it is very important that once the compartmentalization is maintained, the services which are brought in through the MEP, people who would come in and break down all the compartmentalization has to be remade properly, which is done as per how fire stopping material has been tested and listed with the correct substrate. And once these listings are done, these work is done, it is very, very critical that it gets inspected correctly. I'm gonna conclude this very, very quickly by explaining that any building code that you may use, whether it's the National Building Code of India or any other code of the world, which is defining the processes, they all talk about test methods. And these test methods needs to be in place. You need to test the products as per these test methods. I am happy to share that as a laboratory in the UAE, we are probably the only lab in the whole world who can test as well as certify and list products as per Indian standards for fire doors, for partition elements, and so many uh, recently published compliance requirements and regimes from India. This is my last slide and I give it back to the focus team. Thank you. Thank you, Abhishek. Uh, thank you for showing, uh, throwing lights on what material need to be used, how it has to be used, and how it has to be tested and certified. It's a wonderful insight on the pacifier product that will go into uh, critical areas of the building. Thank you. Can you unshare this uh, slide, uh, uh, Abhishek? Yeah. And now uh, we have our president, uh, Mr. V. Suresh. Uh, the moderator of this session is in patiently waiting to take the question answer. I'm sure we would have had uh, 20 questions and we have limited time. He's a wonderful uh, moderator. All of you know, Mr. V. Suresh is a well-known figure in the construction industry in India. He has over 55, exp 55 years of experience in the housing, infrastructure, rural and urban development and built environment sector. He has been the pioneer in the driving various standards and codes in India, and he is also the, the chairman of Indian Green, Indian Green Building Council, IGBC, and vice chairman of National Building Code. He has been very recently awarded the best chief executive of the year by the National Foundation of India, uh, Indian Chamber of Commerce. I now, because of short of the shortage of time, I would uh, ask our uh, president, Mr. V. Shuresh, to come over and take the floor. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Dominic. Uh, at the very first, let me greet Dr. Vijay Agarwal, president of uh, CAHO, and Dr. Lalu Joseph, general secretary of CAHO. I walked in at a time when uh, Dr. Lalu Joseph was speaking, so I could hear all the wonderful uh, initiatives being taken uh, by Kaho. I couldn't hear Dr. Vijay because I was actually chairing one of the major events on uh, uh, vertical cities with the global event as a national chairman with 70 countries participating. So right from early morning there till 5.30 there. So the sessions was like, I come out of that little late where I joined here after closing the session here. So to that extent, I missed uh, Dr. Vijay Agarwal, my Special greetings to you, sir, and for bringing the Kaho team here. And to my good friend, Abhishek Chabra, technically brilliant, and the way in which he made the presentation uh, impressed everybody, I'm sure. And uh, I'm happy that all three together has brought uh, good value onto the table. 
And most importantly, the participants today, over 250, when I walked in over there, that's the number I had on the screen of participants there. They represent hospitals of various categories. Dr. Valu Joseph was telling, they're not sure how many hospitals are there. The number is very big, but how many are part of the CAHO? Of course, they'll be knowing specifically. And the way in which the periodicity which fires are coming in the large number of hospitals over there, uh, focus as a team had organized two, three events. This is the third in the such events on the issue on uh, spread of fire in hospitals in a large way. And there earlier, the people dealing with design of it, people dealing with the, uh, what do you call the construction or the people in the fire authority people join. They looked at it only from the point of view of issues on fire. But uh, the way in which uh, Aluji explained of uh, even uh, the pro probability of a, uh, smoke coming from below the pillow of a patient uh, through mobile, etc. gives a lot of interesting dynamics. But importantly, uh, to talk uh, serious matter, large number of these fires post-COVID situation has come as a result of operation theater and ICUs and other related uh, needs where the movement of the people are restricted in a very large way because of the conditions of the patients there. And even the uh, healthcare professionals being so tied up with that, with the uh, contribution coming of high concentration of oxygen levels uh, there, number one. Number two, as a result of various uh, disinfectant uh, uh, components which are there, which has got e e ethyl alcohol being spread out in a large way and concentration uh, of that in uh, not only false ceiling level, above that and site level, and even uh, the curtains or the particular things are all made of materials which uh, take all the spray disinfectant spray coming on different parts of the body and equipment, etc. cetera. The a short, small short circuit brings the type of fire into it in a very large way. Uh, how do you take care of that, either through the air conditioning system, the infection control has to be brought in, or the spread of the fire has got to be stopped in. A large number of inputs are required from the point of view of design of the hospitals from the to take care of fire protection aspects in a large way and uh, which can be passive design as rightly brought out by Abhishek, an active design component in a, in a big way. And in particular reference to hospital related requests as done. And you mentioned the National Building Code and the Vice Chairman of the National Building Code. And there are separate chapters to deal with the hospital uh, the design related issues, not only for fire safety point of view, structural safety, air conditioning, lift installation, all the other related aspects also are covered there. Uh, since I am also the uh, chairman of the Indian Green Building Council, I thought I should bring to you a notice. We have an exclusive rating for the hospitals and healthcare buildings. And we prepared a wonderful document that should be of great interest to both Chaudhary Sahib, Dr. Chaudhary Sahib and uh, Dr. Lalu. And that is post-COVID situation. Uh, we brought out a fantastic document because the first thing that happened uh, is the Indian Medical Council said if uh, COVID has struck somewhere in uh, uh, early February, March of 2020, somewhere in April, they bought the document that none of the hospitals or buildings can be used if a central air conditioning is there because spread of the COVID takes place in the air conditioning environment. So immediately the IGBC and the ISHRAE, that the Indian Society for Heating and Refrigeration Engineering joined together to bring out a wonderful document and that was brought out in May, 2021. I'm sure you should be, you should get a copy of that if you have not already got it which brought very good guidelines on how do you ensure infection control in a large way in such type of environments, rigor, ventilation, other related aspects, and touch screen, other related one, how to avoid that in the toilet facilities, the other one, doors, etc., etc. We brought out that. So even the rating system for the hospitals, green rating got changed over there, 1.0 version brought with COVID uh, situations already incorporated on that. So I thought I should uh, bring to your notice these uh, additional elements for the information of uh, the uh, uh, president and the general secretary of Taho, because you got a fantastic membership. I'm going to understand over 3,500 hospitals. I do not know if the number is right. You should correct me. Now itself, if the number is too small, you should get me, get me the right, right number. I know the big number uh, of large representative. And, uh, so when Dominic, when he suggested, I said we should definitely have a wonderful program along with the Taho groups there. And uh, Abhishek brought in that wonderful presentation on what all needs to be done. That was a, he covered uh, that for various buildings, which will apply, but for hospital buildings in particular, we got to add, because Amri case was also mentioned uh, 
and the large number of fires that took place in Gujarat as well as in Maharashtra recently, COVID-related one, and uh, uh, another case uh, which was there in Madhya Pradesh where about uh, 21 children, young babies, which were, there were 17 of them were burned over there. So we got to really get into that and find out in respect to hospital environment for various types of situation, outpatient, inpatient, general one, ICUs and the operation theaters, what are all the features that they got to bring in one after another? You have a mechanical engineer in Lalu to come and talk uh, in detail about some of those issues are very interesting to hear. And that's exactly what's happening. It's a multidisciplinary area. Archi hospital design is an area where the architects, the civil engineers, the MEPF, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, firefighting people, add on to that the dimension of the health-related issue of the virus as well as bacteria. Because the nature of filters that you have to put for the air conditioning installation are not the normal one to take care of uh, the normal uh, um, uh, the mold or the, uh, uh, the fungus related issues or the virus related issue or bacteria related issue. HEPA filters are required to be done. So those are details there. So these are very interdisciplinary area of work to work on. It's not just four walls and a roof and put a few Beds so hospital, everything will be fine. No, it won't be. So the document is very, very comprehensive document of the guidance document, which IGBC brought it out, very well received by the industry. So I just thought I should give that. And then, of course, the aspect of the rating system that we have for the hospital. Large number of hospitals are also rated for water efficiency, uh, energy efficiency, waste management efficiency, including the biomedical waste and various other related ones which come. And COVID context will become a little more added uh, some more damage that come on uh, the infection control area as well. So I will leave it at that. This is just a, a greeting, conveying some message on what we are meeting and go and uh, focus exactly an area which is interdisciplinary area wherein all concerned dealing with uh, uh, all the critical utility services as the word focus means is a forum of critical utility services which everything goes and without that no building can function be it the electrical installation or lift installation or air conditioning or heating or lighting or ventilation or the sanitation system or water supply system or uh, the uh, waste management system. If you remove that, you'll only have the walls and roofs and floors, no activity can take place. So very, very necessary that it works in an efficient manner and we have the right level of system dealing with that. And more importantly, the last and most important assets and facility management. A hospital is as good as you maintain that particular thing. You are able to maintain 24 by seven, that clear, clean, hygienic, sanitary environment. It's very, very important that you, you do much more in an operation theater and more so in ICU and also in other general wards. Then therefore that also is another one, which is focus area of uh, assets and facility management of the hospital issues over there. In addition to the people who can work in this area, we are who are the people dealing with each of the services who can be mechanical, electrical, other one, or the facility managers, even the healthcare people. What is that they can do? What is that doctors can do? What is that nurses can do? Paramedical team can do on some of those areas wherein their main job is healthcare to take with the patients, the type of administering the right level of uh, cure and care to be given over there. So therefore, uh, that's also another area how we can work on uh, some of the area because that you that's required. In some of the cases, the emergency requirement comes, like the case of the smoke which came. One or two questions are also coming. It is not only the heat coming and the temperature coming and the fire spreading, and smoke is an important component. Smoke asphyxiation becomes an important component in hospital. And if you're having patients where nearly they are not able to move over there, they're in ICU, they're delivery wards or other related area, the young baby just being born, neonatal issues there, you require special type of uh, issues related to the type of ventilation and smoke extraction that's required also in buildings. I would uh, very strongly therefore urge uh, in continuation what Abhishek said of uh, the uh, uh, projection in the uh, NBC, your detailed coverage available, but I'm sure your uh, team will also work on that. We have Dr. R. Chandrasekhar, who is a PhD, but he's an architect by profession, and he is the advisor to Ministry of Health for large number of hospital care. He's also the chairman for the IGBC rating for healthcare, Dr. R. Chandrasekhar, who has done that. I'm sure you must be, Taho must be already in touch with him. He's also very actively associated with that. With this, so we have, uh, have, because we're supposed to conclude the whole show by 5.30, it's already 5.30, yeah. we'll have to take 15 minutes. And, uh, I'm getting on to that. 
they were uh, they wanted to leave at 5:30 they had an opportunity to talk about this to both uh, vijay agarwal and lalu joseph ji okay thank you okay. so we have a few questions coming on that first question is from uh, uh, niveta satish is the one and primarily it's two is more an observation her worry is that alarm cables energy uh, emergency control systems like hydrant pipes penetrating a fire rated wall i don't understand how it fit penetrates the fire maybe she was meaning about the conduit going will need passive fire protection in place uh, there's a test procedures for the abo instance for type of service uh, cover all that so i'm interested in knowing the test setup for critical services are conducted while having the system alive and uh, i would rather request abhishek since he talked about large number of test procedures coming over there would you like to throw some light on the abhishek so let's be Absolutely. quick and crisp because we have to take at least 10 questions so we let yeah us, but uh, then uh, how do you how do you do that i raise a question i'll do that yeah i'll let be quick answer no let the answer be crisp i said yeah 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 abhishek can be so crisp. i i think uh, this is absolutely possible this is absolutely done uh, not yeah. only do the building codes very specifically define smoke and fire resistance as requirements the test methods test these capabilities very very well yeah. so uh. starting with uh, ensuring that the fire rated walls and floor and roof are fire resistant as well yeah. as make sure that smoke does not pass through there is also fire stopping that is done you simulate the condition that's a question do you simulate absolutely. the condition back to testing okay absolutely okay. absolutely yes that is that is what we do but the screen is frozen the uh, i think we have some audio connections or the video connections sir can you hear me sir are you there can you can you take uh, next question so that uh, you'll come back unmute can can you unmute yeah can you take the next question till he comes back yeah the next question is from mr ms rao Uh, he says authorities authorities insist on ramp based and pressurization systems old buildings cannot provide such systems how do we convey to authorities not to insist on this and uh, still run the hospital so this is a question from ms rao i think uh, doctor can i try to <laughs> hmm. sir uh, suresh sir you are on mute suresh sir. Mamta, unmute. Uh, no, sir, we are unmute because your video video was gone while you speaking. You have to unmute. Uh, yeah, I done that. Yeah, your I video was off. So what? I, what? I, now it's now it's okay. It yeah, yeah, it's gone? okay. Yeah, I think something is because my I'm having twenty four hours one one year. This is the fourth event of the day. Don't forget that. Okay, and one the whole day and followed by no no issue. So let's get on to the answer. So the answer for existing hospital buildings. Uh, the plea by rao is should we insist on provide all those provisions i think to the extent fire safety life safety public safety health safety is concerned whatever requirements that can be incorporated existing buildings has got to be done to retrofit what do you advise biakat wale khan sir yeah sir it is uh, no compromise on uh, safety uh, and fire and safety issues as far as the hospital goes and wherever possible the best practices to be used and yeah. make sure that the life of so many people are yeah. not at stake and that can be a very marginal cost even if you yes. want to put that maybe 2% or 3% of the capital cost all the way but can you imagine the value of life of a person dying anybody can you put a value on that so it's a it's an area of trying to do all that possible in existing building it cannot be like a new building we can do all that but in existing building retrofitting and strengthening has got to be done La Maybe Dr. Lalu Joseph will be able to elaborate since they are having all. Like to open up, Lalu ji. Uh, I I will certainly add on to that, sir. So though initially it was all about ramps being created, now the regulations are a little flexible as well. Horizontal evacuation is permitted, so therefore building to building connectivity. Correct. You know Correct. that's another great thing that has come. Another yeah. thing is if you have multiple buildings. You yeah. connect building to building and have one building connected to a rampway. Absolutely. And Absolutely. the third thing is fire uh, lifts with ah. good pressurization and okay. good compartmentalization there. Yeah. Uh, and a separate generator supply. 
that is a great initiative i feel you know i agree the, yeah so these are systems that the okay. governance has you know so, i should really yeah, thank okay. yeah so and ms rao has got a good reply on that ms yeah. rao has got a good reply and since you talked the hospital and the heights over there originally the height was pretty 30 meter was a limit for hospitals in the nbc and in the 2016 version came that was increased to 45 meters with the stipulation that all the critical use where all the uh, disabled or uh, uh, physically bad situation people there that should be the top first 30 meters and use the 45 meters above area for other activities and laboratories testing and other uh, opd and other related one i just thought i'll bring that also mr labu wagasia has got a question on uh, uh, on uh, accidents seem to be unavoidable which is also which is also told by abhishek what is telling is mitigation mechanisms has got to be done and uh, uh, he would suggest that he should he wants donkey proof solution he said that's the only way we can to ensure that 100% will be done he is making a strong plea to have good uh, compliance and uh, enforcement do you agree is it possible he says donkey proof solutions that means you cannot that's what he has said in his comment so uh, i primarily is asking for uh, uh, what can i say uh, um, zero tolerance compliance that's what he means would love would like somebody wants to add abhishek or liyakat or dr vijay agarwal ji would you like to add something on that or some something is not possible to get it done i can uh, add, I, add a very I simple like to thing. just add one thing that yeah. uh, dr agarwal there please. are a huge amount of huge amount of requirements that are coming to make naturally hospitals uh, safer from the fire point of view yeah but we we must understand that on the other hand the various government schemes the way they are reimbursing for the healthcare mm. is uh, making the whole economic survivability of the hospitals a question mark so okay. what i am requesting is that people like you have to propose to the government that the hospitals can be given some interest free loan or something uh, for financial these assistance kind of upgradations okay it's a good uh, suggestion financial assistance good while so there cannot be a compromise on this but they must be financially assisted in reaching that otherwise i am saying uh, we are not really moving anywhere i think in a post covid situation this is a need this type of proposals i am sure will definitely uh, hearten both uh, the ministry of health as well as ministry of uh, of finance nirmala sitaram ji who and who are linking with the banking and financial sector would also be try to see how we can help because uh, you are trying to expand the facility you require additional uh, hospital beds you require all those facilities also good point we leave it at that i think let's go on to achay gag achay gag question achay gag is very rightly brought out don't put all your egg in the other basket of passive fire protein but what he says is but the major cause of casual is suffocation due to smoke which lalu also mentioned over there entering the gaps between the doors and walls also from services cross across from compartments i feel the stress needs uh, uh, to be given for uh, ensuring smoke and right thing in all fairness abhishek has given a good amount of clarification on that what how do we do smoke control in hospital there are detailed provisions uh, we can always have a, a exclusive program on that achhe therefore this is an area which is very well known very well identified Uh, unless somebody wants to add on either diakat or abhishek wants to add a, a minute on that smoke control in hospitals well Are lots of codes lots of codes and and provisions uh, in procurement documents yeah, yeah. very clearly define yeah. methodologies of smoke extraction uh, yeah. ducts and dampers as well as as i mentioned uh, a lot of pacifier protection mechanisms ensure mm. that yeah. uh, there is compartmentalization from smoke as well as fire yeah I, even i think uh, even lalu mentioned pressurization which is also his next point of akshay regarding services shafts he has also told on uh, those aspects also okay uh, we have swek uh, salanka wande is passive fire protection ensured by authority while approving new constructed occupancies in ua and anywhere outside india what you want to know compliance of that i'm sure it must be being done this is a good code isn't it regulation absolutely is well in yeah. the uae it is yeah. it is very very stringent mechanism it's a layered mechanism not only have manufacturers yeah. they need certification and listing and listing. they need to be registered with the authority yes. having jurisdiction the 
consultants and the yeah. contractors and the building owners have defined liabilities in the yeah. building code yeah and in fact if, if i can add one more dimension i'm not interrupting if i have one more dimension you cannot be on a one off thing you would also ensure it works on that so uh, audit periodical audit that these type of things are continuously working and performing how periodicity is it annual or once in month or a quarter and a related one but there is when the real thing happen most of them may not be functioning that also brings an important component of the audit uh, suvex uh, uh, question maybe is that what can be the best practice in emergency preparedness for hospitals across the world that's a nice question we can bring a, a good document should be brought out on this particular thing on best practice or emergency preparedness of hospitals across the world you know very nice question simple question yeah, but it means a lot who can answer on that yeah who can uh, who can answer dr lal joseph dr lal yes <laughs> absolutely so we need to have a good document brought out and that's the need of the as because yeah. people really don't have the right protocols and kaho is going to be working on that to bring yeah. in protocols for evacuation disaster management we have brought out a good uh, you know document on mock drills how to conduct how to do table top exercises in hospitals but eventually yes we'll have to work on a good uh, book for our hospital. have have you have you addressed on emergency preparedness one is yes, a drill yes. related rule. that is physical activity how to run how to yes, yes. take up uh, yeah and their risk assessment management mitigation preparedness everything together because people need help we we'll have to do okay. yeah okay shantilal uh, kumba wants to know how to inspect and maintain the passive fire protection system like fire door curtains etc are there any checklist available for the same absolutely there are published standards not just checklist okay. uh, thank you answer is very specific yeah. answer is very good it's available then Nf suvek salanta goes forward <laughs> nfp 80 is the standard yes the name is the number of standards also there Uh, possibly if you could just give that we'll put in our reply sir uh, suvek wants to go further on any specific fire protection system or operation theater and icus there are there the the code really suggests on the particular thing would you like to open out deakat or abhishek 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 um any I mean, specific I... fire protection system or operation theater and icus not uh, specific systems are not known to me compartmentalization and processes remain the same the stringency level changes possibly what type of diffusing to be done in case of fire takes place in operation theater what are the ways you can you may not have a sprinkler there on that or you will have extinguishers or what type of things you what type of things you require that is an area where you have large amount of oxygen anesthesia all those things you can't add on to that itself can contribute to that that's a very nice question is this with the gray area of an answer we don't have that we'll address that particular thing to the nbc if answers are not coming from the day but that nice question on that well maybe that's why labu wagasa the next question which is coming one minute later lots of codes and laws already in place still we are far far away from being precise precise is use a precise how long more waiting time expected to we reach the world standard so i always tell it's like a pencil uh, and a sharpener if you give to a, a sharpener is very sharp and pencil the lead is bad so if you give to a young child of a four or five year old you give a sharpener by the time you do that the end of the day no pencil is available because the lead is not strong enough <laughs> the pencil so it's all depends upon in developing economies and uh, countries with various levels of degrees of economy very very strict standards and compliance come in the developed countries of very large nature and the developing countries improve that over a period least developed country not so much so i think the answer to uh, this question of his is that we are already doing well it's reasonably well because i myself have been associated with building code work for the last 56 years uh, right from 1965 where the first version 1970 next one 83 Then the 2005 version, latest 2016 version. Yesterday was the meeting of the division council where thought of changes to be made in NBC 2016 over there. So it's under constant review, and we are trying to bring it in line with uh, that one chart which Abhishek brought of not only the National Building Code of India, the NSPA document, various documents are there. We are more or less in line with that. We are not so bad. What do you say, Abhishek? Where would you put on a one to ten scale Indian National Building Code visa with international? Would you put seven out of ten, or eight out of ten, or nine out of ten? Where? I think even if I put five or eight or ten, 
uh, it is very very critical that people start adopting it with adopting some kind it. of a financial so, or legal penalty compliance and enforcement becomes an important thing it is not quotal requirement compliance and enforcement varadarajan ji is asking a nice question what kind of fire safety methods you followed in server rooms very nice server rooms are very very important radiation generating equipment like ct room and linear accelerator room that's a very very specific question for varadarajan over there do we have an answer on that immediately quick answer is there are code requirements for oh. server room they are very defined they are very yeah yes only radiating generating and as well as uh cat scan rooms and linear accelerator room uh vardrajan i you can rest assured i will definitely get an answer i don't have it straight away unless liaquat would you like to know something on that no sir khan has attended uh, he's another uh, meeting he just joined he's gone oh, so yeah. we'll come back on that dinesh dev says in uh, nbc table 7 you know fire protection requirements are stated only for hospitals up to 45 meters does this mean hospital i already answered that this is mean host so hospital height limitation is in broad out till reason of 30 meters now 45 he is telling why don't we make hospitals more than 45 meters why not we can make it even 60 meters make it even 100 story building also but you should forget they are not active agile people they are all patients there the older people young children in icu etc that's why the limiting clause of the 30 meters or 100 feet have been provided for up to 10 story for all the critical users ot and all that and beyond that go for another 15 meters so answer is available as far as indian conditions are concerned and this moral situation all over the world you don't have a 100 story hospital building you might have maximum of the order of around 15 to 20 stories we are not aware of any hospital buildings more than that are you aware of it uh, dr vijay agrawal ji or lalu ji not really sir not really that they know the reason the reason why so the answer is all already there uh i think uh, litty workers has raised how to reduce sanitizer related fire risk you got sanitizer is primarily to stop the infection but but only thing is how to clean up at regular intervals which is of course what's happening in the operation theaters and the icus sanitizers use excess use is the one how to reduce that would you like an answer on that lalu ji lalu ji Frequent hand wash, soap and water. Water. Okay, that there is an answer, Liti. Okay, Anurag Chauhan ji says, do diagnostic centers need the same fire safety arrangement as in the hospitals? Diagnostic no. centers have the requirement. No, they are uh, they are qualified as a slightly different occupancy, and okay. while the measures of active and passive fire protection, both of them yeah. need to. So Anurudh, you have an answer on that, okay? Not necessarily the same exacting requirement like a hospital, but slightly on. We will take side. two more questions, sir. Yeah, let me see. We can stop whenever you want, okay? Uh, Kirti, uh, Kirtan Hegde would like to. Our building is seventeen point three meters. We are installed, for blah blah, etc. We are sixty feet wide, etc. So, but still, five people are uh, NOC for our building. What best? Uh, rather surprised. Why you and why the? fire people are not given an noc for this hospital which is only about 18 meters that's about six storied building and he has provided detectors alarm system etc which we will to find is on a wider road uh, i can't give an answer immediately if you have done the compliance the fire authority should give an noc on that uh, normally okay uh, thank you jaswinder singh should be the last question i'll take which area in the hospital need, need, need not provide the sprinklers like in a hospital there are no sprinklers in some stores where there are racks or endoscopy or bronchoscopy are sprinkle free uh, anybody would like to take that sprinkler non sprinkler area which are the areas where no sprinklers are to be provided yeah, we we have to uh, the study because uh, the what what kind of storage if it is a store lab you don't need but you need a dry uh, sprinkler is required or we need to have a clean agent uh, separation system where water can damage equipment so you need to have a suppression system the clean agent suppression or gas gas is suppression system there there is other fire fighting besides sprinklers there are various other operations wet riser dry riser yeah various other options available including extinguishers of various natures which are there foam extinguishers are there also uh, we are the co2 extinguishers powder various things are there so depending upon each of the fire but i think two three things on it we have to give an answer because questions have come on that namely ct scan area also the uh, areas which are uh, uh, the uh, uh, radiation generating room 
linear accelerator room what we need to do and so he's also uh, asked some of the story how, how is that difference sir i don't see a big difference in that it's like i know but then the the gentleman has raised the question the gentleman or lady the gentleman correct is a vardarajan he is the one who has raised it it is like any other hospital area yeah Yes. Correct. You require the protection on that. Fire will happen. Yeah, we that. have. But the yes, only sir. thing is, what what even you worried is, if you put sprinkler and all the particular thing, will it will it affect the working or the particular later? You know, we should not create problem to that very costly equipment. Investing around twenty uh, lakhs or thirty lakhs or forty lakhs. I wouldn't know the type of. Sir, is it, uh, I would like to answer to that because uh, there are various other technologies that can be, we can we cannot use. Water based sprinkler. There are, I told you, gaseous system. There are very early smoke detection system there, which can integrate with this. So yeah. uh, we have alternate uh, technologies and separation system can be designed. But you can't say I am not going to use it. You need yeah. to. Use it. Again, the answer is also lying in the right level of preventing the particular thing to happen over there. The detection alarm system to be done, and therefore. Also, a periodical checks that will be the inspection that will be done over there, which will also ensure where what needs to be attended. After the fire comes, there's no meaning checking the uh, uh, short circuit MCB or whatever. If you had a regular system by which the uh, the preventive fire inspection is done at regular intervals, you would have the problem. I would very I forgot to make a mention. Just like I mentioned about the NBC, you have Part 12 available called Assets and Facility Management or Part 12, and kindly go through that particular requirement. That's the first time once the Building is completed. Nobody, the architect is gone, engineer gone, everybody is gone. But that's when the real performance of building takes place. So they brought in a good document or checklist available how to ensure that all your systems are working when you really need it. So those checklists are very good for all the services installation. Kindly have a look into that also. I, I think I, with that we stop uh, uh, today's session. I hope uh, how much beyond time we have gone over and. Yes, sir. We have overrun by thirty uh, minutes. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let's not do it. Not do it further. <laughs> yeah, let's let's not, sir. I have I have told uh, you know all the rest of the queries can be answered. They can email to admin at our focus. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we can. Any, any further uh, sir? Any further question, uh, uh, Doctor Chaw, Vijay Agarwalji and Doctor Lalu Josephji? Please, if you have any further questions from your team member, we can even organize one more larger round. This is the first of the rounds that we had with focus along with you. Uh, with the hospital team you are the user very most important you are the most important user you are the one setting up the hospital you are the organization dealing with all the hospital if you are able to give the right guidance for people establishing the hospital and running the hospital take my word that's the best way to do it and i have to uh, not confess i have to really admit that the earlier event that we had we had less of hospital people coming there were a few of them were there but we did not have Directly the one which are hospital running people over there, and therefore Rahul's coming is very very important. Let's work together on this. Let's build on it strongly. Okay, thank you very much. Therefore, Dr. Vijay Agarwalji and Lalu, thank you so much, sir. I'm sure I... Dominic will do the final thanking in the right way. And Abhishek, we... thanks a lot. I'm signing off. Thank you. Go ahead, Dominic. Go ahead. We thank you, sir. Somebody we thank you me. so much. Doctor and i want to just uh, request that uh, together sir this uh, national building codes are drawers as far as the tier 2 tier 3 towns are concerned yes people are not even aware about uh, what those co codes mean and what should be done so i think yes, let's sir. do something together to sensitize yes. people the and as i said let us work on how do you kind of give them uh, motivation to fulfill the things and upgrade their facility okay so thank you very yeah. much and let's work together for even ah, doing some kind ah, of survey research to find out the present status good as a, as a half a minute clarification national building code the word national means it is not about big cities and towns alone it's for all the 700 7313 cities and towns of the country requirements are all covered Hill area is covered, rural area is covered, coastal area is covered. So it covers requirements of all situations, so covering from the cities down to towns, down to villages in a large way. But you require there are also hospitals come. Obviously, hospital doctors have to be there. So the building is to be done. The concerned architects and the engineers has got to be brought into the picture. Or government bring, building all their hospitals and primary health centers. uh in large number of villages they have got to take into account if they themselves have to take into account in a large way uh for especially for medium towns and other related one and anyway, a good point that you sir sir ji 
can uh, i can i can i just add i am sorry this i yeah, don't know, this, miss the opportunity uh, dr vijay has brought out a very good point that implementation needs to be done at the country level and as i know in the country each state has a different fire act and i think uh, kaho or nabh or any of these hospital accreditation body have the power to probably add compliance to the nbc as one of the criteria for giving accreditation i have this is just I have a suggestion tried, i have tried that <laughs> so nat people have indicated that while they do all with the with the health and medical space requirement and the equipments and machinery and other facilities and healthcare related one they are not equipped to dealing on the on the building related one and therefore in the nab accreditation that they have for that's primarily for the healthcare facilities that they have created the accreditation is coming but your point is well taken it has been raised over there with the uh, because your structural safety fire safety public safety life safety health safety electrical safety all these safety features are coming in the hospital there how if we can't take care of that particular aspect it will be a very major thing left out but it's a continuous dialogue going on with the nap authority by the way Uh, sir, apologies uh, apologies to dr vijay or, or dr joseph i am not... inviting uh, <laughs> kaho i am inviting kaho on team uh, because uh, bas uh, uh, and the leadership of sanjay pat always welcomes any kind of workshop to rural areas especially tier 2 tier 3 cities so we as a group like kaho and focus can uh, along with uh, bas a national building code we can do workshop to the hospital who are unaware of national building codes various standards so we can have whenever you feel it is right time or whenever you can plan it out let us know we can bring the bas bas top team i yeah. was there in the I will, yesterday uh, i will connect you with uh, national building code committee and bas committee and we can hold a couple of uh, workshops under the kavo banner and focus and uh, nbc so we can do that so they'll be very open they'll be happy to do that because that if i uh, draw uh, there's no one document in hospital alone so each of the parts of the building got part 2 part 3 part 4 part 6 then 8 and 9 all of them contain hospital coming so uh, my good friend arun kumar I was yesterday with him he has identified for hospital related thing each of the parts what does it talk about so it'll be as a matter it's easy to take all and put it together in one per day what what nbc talks of only hospital because you're only worried about hospital it can be also be a good extension document that can made but it's a requirement is already documented by saying which clause is available for each of the occupancy level it's it's available so uh, i want to thank uh, kavo management and kavo uh executive members especially dr vijay agarwal dr ellu joseph with one phone call they agreed to participate and support this event and uh, we thank you for promoting among with your members and we we you know we are sure that hope you know in the uh, going forward we will have many more um, uh, events such a knowledge series which can help uh, Uh, to build safe hospitals across the country i want to take uh, thank abhishek uh, chandra who you can just come you can just come i just saw something on the flash on the screen just now abu lawasa uh, labu wagasia asking where can you get a copy of the national building i think you should write to the bureau of indian standards write write to director civil engineering bureau of indian standards manak bhavan new delhi one no, i have uh, i have given already given i have the copy soft copy yeah. which is free circulation I have mentioned my email ID and uh, uh, and it's a it's a it's a complimentary document. You don't pay any money. Yeah, I really paid thirteen thousand, fourteen thousand for the document. Now it is made available free. I have the copies of that. You may write to so me. So Labu Wagasia, you get the document. Also. So your answer, yeah. your questions also answered. That just came. So I want to screen. I want to thank Abhishek Chabra who joined uh, us from Dubai. He is sitting out from Dubai and thank you for sharing your. Uh, wonderful knowledge and uh, state uh, the testing and compl- fire compliances and uh, thank you all the participants for uh, having a lot of patience to thank wait. you very much so we are uh, scheduled for one and a half hour uh, we have crossed uh, 30 with 30 to 40 minutes more uh, we look out to see you again you are wonderful evening thank you very much god bless you all thank, thank you, you. bye bye